Hello, 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 everyone. It's Dr. Tamara Beckford, and I'm here to welcome you inside the EntreMD Business School. And this is our wonderful podcast. And we have an extremely important guest today. She's one of my classmates, and I cannot wait for you to hear all the gems that she's going to deliver for you today. So this is Dr. Michelle. I'm going to have her introduce herself. She's going to let you know all about her, her business, and where she's located. Take it away, Dr. Michelle. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Dr. Beckford. It's really, really great to be here. Um, mm -hmm. So I am Michelle Quirk. I am a pediatrician and a mm -hmm. running coach, and I'm the founder of Mindful Marathon, where I help make running easy and fun for busy professionals. And I am physically located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but I coach um, all over the place. I love it. <laughs> yes. And you know, the really fantastic thing about being a part of the school is that I get to see everyone's journey. And Dr. Michelle has been coaching people for 5K, 10K and marathons. And they are, and these are people who are like, oh, I don't have never run. The farthest I've gotten was going to the mailbox to get my mail. <laughs> and then now they're running like 5Ks and all, even some are running marathons. So we really, really love what you're doing. Now, you know, with this business, some people are just like, whoa, coaching? Well, coaching running? Wow. So they probably never thought that that was possible, but you've made and you show that this is possible. So now within their mind, they're thinking like, well, what are some of the things that people can get from this? So what are some of the tangible wins? You know, let them know what are some of those tangible wins that you've had within your business? Because people are just didn't even realize that they can do this. Yeah. Within well, those last 12 months. Go ahead. I didn't realize that I could coach either. So <laughs> this, this all came to be about five years ago. And it was, you know, another friend and physician coach who really um, got me on to coaching in the first place because I really hadn't thought of it. And I, here I was writing, you know, training plans for my mom, my husband, my friends, and I was already doing it. Um, but I just hadn't thought like this could be a viable business. Um, so entered the EntreMD business school. So I've been in the school for a while since mm -hmm. you've been there, Dr. Beckford. <laughs> yes, yes. We're, we consider yeah. ourselves some of the OGs. <laughs> yes, 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 the OGs. And so, yeah, I think, you know, at, at the beginning when I started, I coached a lot of beginner runners or people who were like me, who, um, you know, they were never runners. They weren't running track or cross country um, in school or college or anything like that. And they took up running later in life. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, a lot of the beginner wins really, um, for, for me, the tangible wins are that these runners make running a consistent part of their lives. So mm -hmm. people that I worked with in 2019 and 2020 and started running, they're still running and now they're running longer distances. They're running half marathons and full marathons and yeah, they've, they've changed their lives, you know, and that to see that over the last five years has been really a gift and when I started, I never thought I would have so many people who wanted to run the longer distance. That was always my hope. Mm -hmm. But I was really starting with people running short distances and then they got hooked. And now we're here we are. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, you know, people are starting 5Ks and then they've moved on to 10 half marathons and marathons. Now, yep. when you look at that, do you think it parallels how your business is itself in that when you started, you know, yeah. your business, it was smaller, but then like now you've been able to increase and increase in your business. Would you say that's a parallel that's going on? Definitely, definitely. And I, I think the business journey is much like the marathon journey um, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And I think, you know, it speaks to the consistency of the efforts that you put in. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started coaching, I was doing mostly one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, and I still do that with a lot of my clients. But I've tried some group programs. I've had beginner group programs um, with a Ready, Set, Run program. And then I've also had some half marathon group programs because th that's what naturally happened as we went through. There were more and more people who wanted to do longer distances. So I'm hopeful that someday I'll be able to do a marathon group too, but we're not, wow. we're not quite there yet, but of course it parallels um, the growth of the business and being able to 
go from one-on-one -on -one coaching to scale it a little bit and do mm -hmm. group coaching um, and retreats and some other different things along the way. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. It's just like, wow, so amazing. So many things that can happen. So we've talked about some of those tangible wins. Let's now talk about some of the intangible wins that you've had within your business within the last 12 months. Let's let them hear mm. it. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. So many intangible wins, I think. Mm -hmm. um, number one, um, last year was an interesting year for me. So 2023 mm -hmm. um, had some some family health concerns going on and really had to take a little bit of a step. Uh, I don't want to say a step back, but just um, slow down. At a slow down and the mm -hmm. pace of grace um, yes. to be able to manage all of these things that were happening. And, you know, I started the year off having lots of different goals and I had to kind of change course a little bit and adjust. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, over the last 12 months, last year still ended up being um, the highest revenue year in Mindful Marathon, wow. even with the slowdown. <laughs> um, and so the intangible wins, let me try mm -hmm. to pick three. I'll try to pick three. <laughs> One, mm -hmm. I think, is that um, some creativity came back because mm -hmm. I was able to create space for mm -hmm. myself. Um Number two, and along with that is um, setting boundaries. I was able to set good boundaries with family, personal life, um, mm -hmm. my job as an employed pediatrician, like the, the boundary setting has been amazingly helpful to be able to help grow the business. And I think that was a reason why the creativity came back. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe third intangible win, um, intangible win. I think it's actually helped my own running. How about that? <laughs> Oh, wow. Yes. It's helped my own running because I've created um, more time for myself. Oh, wow. And I, you know, I, as I listened to those intangible wins where you were able to be more creative, you set more boundaries and then created more time for running, which when you go running, you get more creative because your ideas come in and then you are able to set the boundaries, yeah. allowed more time for running. So, wow, we saw that whole cycle which, you know, allowed you to be able to get through a, a time that was a little bit difficult um, dealing with family related things, but still bringing in the most revenue. Yes. <laughs> so, it's, so it's still that, as we were saying, paralleling the 5K, the 10K, the half marathon and the marathon. It's still paralleling all of that within your journey here in business. Love it. Now, you know, some of the things that happens in business that we have some ups and then we have some valleys or what we call them in EBS. We don't really talk about them as, oh my gosh, I, you know, it was like doomsday. We look at them as lessons learned. So what are some of the biggest lessons that you'd say you learned within your business <laughs> within the last 12 months? Mm, last 12 months. I think mm -hmm. um, probably the biggest one is we, we have the 80-20 rule, right? Mm -hmm. And we talk about the 80-20 rule all <laughs> throughout all aspects of life. And actually, I talk about it with my runners all the time. So mm -hmm. for, from the running aspect, that means that we run most of our runs. So 80% or more of our runs at easy or conversational pace mm -hmm. so that we can be able to really focus that 20% on the long run and the speed work and all of that stuff that helps us improve in running. It's mm -hmm. the same in business. And mm -hmm. for a long time, I I don't think I um, fully understood the concept to focus on the 20%. And I was, not that I was ignoring it, but I, I was ignoring it without knowing. Right. And in the last 12 months, I feel like I really have been able to tap into what is the 20% for my business. Mm -hmm. And I've created a system around that. So for example, when I know that I have one-on-one -on -one athletes who have a certain goal race on the calendar, like a half marathon, I know that they're going to take some time off after that race, which I recommend, right? I don't want everybody to keep running <laughs> forever uh, on and on um, that can lead to injuries and other things. So I know that they're going to have a time, a time off, even if they want to continue coaching. So I know that I want to, if I want to have another one-on-one -on -one client to step into their place, when coaching spots will open up, I know now that I have to think about that a few months ahead of time. And before that, I never really thought about these things. So focusing on the 20% has been mm -hmm. huge in the last year. 
Oh, I love it. And you know, it's being intentional with the decisions that you're making and so that you're keeping things fluid and, and in motion. And interestingly, being on this side, watching you, I always thought, and I always admired, I should say, that you're able to really focus in on that 20%. Ever since you've been in the business school, I kind of felt like you had this gift. It was like, ah, oh, Michelle has this gift. She can focus on the 20%. She, like you're able to zone in. But I guess what I really am seeing is how as you have grown as an entrepreneur, your zone of being able to focus has improved even more. So you're still doing it. You're just doing it now at a higher level. So I'm still admiring you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. But yes, I really felt like it was a bit haphazard and a bit, mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't have any system around it before. And really the last year, I can see the difference and it it doesn't feel so haphazard Love anymore, it. which is a good thing. <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, you know, with all that you have um, learned in the systems that you've now put in place, how would you say that the business school has a helped you within these last 12 years to achieve some of your goals? Oh, goodness. Um, so many things. I, <laughs> I think um, for one, the, the community, um, the community is extremely inspiring and you can learn a lot. Um, even if you never attend one of the calls, if you just mm -hmm. hang out in the Facebook group, you can learn a ton. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the community is extremely inspiring and motivating and mm -hmm. I learned so much from people who are in other industries. So maybe not from the coaches, but people who mm -hmm. are in, you know, a private practice um, and who have who are in industry. And there are there are so many amazing physicians in the group. And there's always something, a pearl to learn from everyone, even if they're not doing exactly what you're doing. And things mm -hmm. that you might not think would have to do with your business, they they do. And so I think the community is the best part for me. Um, and the other is um, a little bit of accountability. I need that to mm -hmm. continue to go forward. And so there are so many opportunities um, for accountability in the group, whether it's the live call, the monthly challenge, the book of the month. Um, we There are so many things, the CEO power hours. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many touch points that even if you do, you know, again, if you do 20%, if you do mm -hmm. one out of five of the things, it will still move the business forward. Um, and it helps with consistency. So I think, yeah, community number one and having accountability number two. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. You know, the thing too that I um, also admire about being part of the school is the opportunity to meet, network, and then connect and collaborate. And that's something mm -hmm. that you've been able to do, right? So you've been yep. able to even collaborate with um, some of your classmates. Do you want to give us a quick two-minute spiel of what that was? What did it look like? <laughs> and what did yeah. you even gain from that experience? Yeah, I think um, so in addition to, um, you know, guesting on each other's podcasts and YouTube channels um, mm -hmm. and Instagram lives and all of these different platforms, um, the, the probably the the gem of 2023 and early 2024 was co-hosting a movement and meditation retreat with Dr. Rashmi Shram, who is also mm -hmm. in the school. Mm -hmm. And that started over um, a conversation probably back at our first retreat in 2021. <laughs> and and it was just a, you know, do you think we could do something together sometime, you know? And and we we talked about it and then the idea was born walking on a beach together. Like, I think these two things go together. I think we could pull this off. Um, and we, yeah, so we had a retreat in the fall of 2023 and we had a second one in February of this year, 2024. Um, and we're both, we're, we're adventuring out into having a solo retreat. Each of us are trying one this fall. So stay tuned for that. But yes, it was an amazing collaboration born out of a friendship that started in the school. I love it. And then the other thing that Dr. Michelle has not mentioned is that both retreats were sold out. So it's not so <laughs> So this is a way that, you know, collaborating and branching out and just really expanding all that you have, the talents that you have, the talents that your colleagues have, merging them, enhancing it. It's all part of what happens here within the school. So now someone is listening to this, Dr. Michelle. 
<laughs> and they're trying to decide if it's something that they should do. Should I be a part of the business school? Shouldn't I? Should I apply? Shouldn't I? Is it really <laughs> that good? Or are they just talking the talk? <laughs> what would you say to that person? <laughs> I would say, yes, you, yes, you should apply. Um, and I have been around since 2020 in the mm -hmm. group. Um, and I've stuck around for a reason. Um, and I have many, many friends um, and, and great colleagues and collaborators within this group. The other thing I will say is that I am definitely an introvert. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it was hard for me to take this step to go into the school. Like I really thought about it for a long, long time. So I think the lesson here is that um, the sooner the better. Like if you're on the fence, just hedge to the yes, um, mm -hmm. and it will sort itself out. It'll all be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you it'll don't have all to, be fine. <laughs> it'll all be fine. You don't have to have all the answers now. Like there are people in many different stages of business. When I started, I was only about a year into this coaching business. And I had really, I felt like I had no idea what I was doing. So mm -hmm. it'll be all right. It will be all right. And there she is now. She's coached on many different um, avenues, many different platforms, collaborated, doing retreats, um, and now is also hosting her own retreat that she's going to be having at the in the fall of this year at, of this recording. So I don't know. Any last words for anyone, Dr. Michelle? Because I think you said just if you're hedging, just hedge to the yes. But any last yeah. words? Yeah, um, I'll leave you with one of my favorite running mantras, which is a great mantra for life and business, which is run the mile you're in. Love it. <laughs> run the mile you're in. With that, I am going to drop this mic because Dr. Michelle just did that. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Michelle Quirk, who is the CEO of Mindful Marathon. And she is here in the business school. If you come and join, you will be able to connect, collaborate, and be able to do all the things. And join us here. Like you said, <laughs> if you're hedging, hedge to the yes. Thank you so much for listening to this wonderful episode of Inside the Entrepreneur Business School. I'm Dr. Tamara Beckford, and I will catch you on the inside. <laughs>